G'day. Uh, last, I guess, vlog I tried to have a crack at, I was sort of talking about the um, how I was going to custom fit out my electric setup. That's basically how it looks now. Pretty happy, it's been watertight, it's been good. It's, yeah, everything I wanted from you, so I'm pretty stoked. Today I thought I might try to do something a little bit different. Um, bit of just basic boat and trailer maintenance. Um, I treat my gear pretty rough. Uh, resale value has never been high on my priority list. I'm, I'm an absolute animal and I just thrash my gear. But um, I don't know, maybe I'll give you a couple of tips on sort of how I make it last. We'll start with the trailer anyway. Gal trailer, the only thing that isn't gal is the springs and the axle and as you all know they're first things to go. So one thing I made sure I did was um, from new, I made sure before it even touched the water, I covered it in fish oil and you can get those cans from super cheap, whatever, cost nothing. But just soaked it in fish oil um, and it's been good this trailer's going on three years now um, predominantly saltwater fishing and no rust it's all good really good couldn't be happy with that as far as all the other components go just wd-40 inox possum piss whatever you want to call it but just keep spraying it. Just make sure you keep spraying it. Keep it properly lubricated. And like I said, three years, no issues. Uh, the one main thing I do is I uh, wash the hell out of it every afternoon when I come back. So I'll get the hose under there. And I make sure I'm soaking the hull and the trailer with fresh water thoroughly. You can get these bearing buddings as well. These things are pretty good. Just keep squeezing them, get yourself a grease gun, keep filling them up and you shouldn't have too many problems. It's all good. Like most hulls coming out of the workshop these days, and this isn't any gripe on Stacer or Quintrex or any boat manufacturer for that matter. They're just pretty lazy with their welds. Um, it's all cost cutting, I get it. But as you can see, they don't, fully weld your hull. So the first thing I did was I went and got a couple tubes of clear roof and gutter and in between every weld I filled it with silicon. Same underneath. I was getting a lot of water in there and I think that's what was the reason that my initial electric system uh, fried it so early. Only after about a year and a half, two years. Um, you'd think it would last a lot longer than that, but because of the welds and the gaps in the hull and the gunnels, salt water was getting down there and that's what happened. So I've sealed that all up now. I've gone all the way around the hull, underneath the bow mount motor, around my anchor well, and even siliconed around my rod holders. Uh, no more water intrusion now, so it's, um, it's a lot better. One of the biggest ones is you can't get away from, as a fish show, is fucking fish guts. Um, having a carpeted boat, it's quite susceptible to uh, stink, so, what I like to do is get it out there when I get home, scrub the absolute fuck out of it with uh, just car wash, really. Just car wash, soapy water, um, hose it all out, jack the trailer right up, and allow it to all drain out. I'll make sure when I let it sit, all hatches are lifted up, and that'll allow all the water and shit to drain out of the carpet and then leave it in the sun. The sun's your best friend, really. Make sure you don't leave any lures in there, but um, they will explode. Get your electronics out. But as far as carpet and fish guts, sun is your best friend with soapy water. 
probably one of the um, one of the main parts of our boat that sort of gets left behind and we don't really give much attention to is actually what's going on underneath the deck. So I try at least once a month to open it all up, obviously get everything out of there and st stuff the hose down underneath the bottom deck, fill it up with water, put the bung in, um, yeah, fill it up, flush out all the salt, all the gunk that's been building up and um, it's a good little uh, routine to get into at least once a month. It's going to um, save a lot of erosion and just corrosion and I don't know, whatever else happens underneath there. Um, also it can help, you know, if you've got any sinkers that are lodged under there or anything that's slipped under there, fill it up, jack your trailer right up, try to flush it all down the bottom so you can get it out. As for the motor, old two smoker, 40 horsepower, Yamaha Enduro. Probably the most solid thing ever invented. I don't think you could kill this motor. I honestly don't. It's just hard as nails. But what I always do is I put the earmuffs on, run it for at least 10 minutes, and then I disconnect the fuel. I disconnect the fuel and let it run out so no shitty two-stroke oily fuel sits in the carbies, building up gunk. Um, I'm pretty busy with work, kids, all the rest of it, so my fishing can be few and far between. So I don't want my boat sitting for extended periods of time with uh, ship fuel in the carbies. So make sure you burn it all out. Another thing people don't really give much consideration for is their bait tank. Um, I have a bait tank and I use it quite regularly. And what do you reckon we're pumping through there to keep our bait alive? Salt water. So there is a motor down in there just constantly pumping salt water through it. So get your hose on it at the end of every trip, get your hose in, get the fresh water in, make sure you run it out. Another one is your bilge pump as well. If you want anything to work in an emergency, it's definitely your bilge pump. So make sure every now and then you run some fresh, go to the dam. If you're lucky enough and you live close to a impoundment, go to a freshwater dam, pull your bung out, let the hull fill up with water, pump it out with your bilge pump. It's a, it just gets that fresh through there, get rid of all the salt and feed your bait and take as well with the fresh water. Uh, the last thing I guess is electrics. One thing that spins me out about Minn Kota, I, I tell you, I don't get it, but what is going on here? They've got these two, I guess, voids that are covered with little stick on tabs. But obviously after a couple of years, those stick on tabs don't stick on anymore. I've just roof and gutted it. Obviously that's gonna be a, um, considering the way it lays, it's gonna be susceptible to a lot of salt water entry. So I, I really don't know what they were thinking by having them there. Um, make sure they're closed. Batteries. Always protect your positive terminal cover. Always. The last thing you want, especially near fuel storage, is having that there. Um, the possibility of ignition. I don't know. If you're out 20k offshore in a little tub, the last thing you want to do is swim with big fucking sharks. Doesn't sound like a fun idea to me. Um, charging the batteries is the last thing I'm going to go through. So I've got two different types of batteries on my boat. The front battery that runs my Minn Kota only. That's a hundred amp deep cycle maintenance style battery. So maintenance means you can actually get in there, pull the caps off. You can top it up with distilled water. What runs my electric bilge pump, everything else is a sealed battery, so maintenance freestyle battery. Now, one thing I learned is with your maintenance freestyle batteries, they are a sealed battery, so they cannot ventilate. You want to charge them slowly. So I use a six amp charger. As you can see, I can select between 12 and six, but I charge that battery with six amp. I want a long, slow, easy going charge. 
that's not going to blow my battery. I found if I try pump 20 amps through sealed batteries, they don't last. I get a year or two out of them, they swell up, they're no good. For my maintenance style battery that can ventilate, I pump 20 amps straight into that. These battery chargers aren't expensive. Um, this Powertech I bought from Bias Boating in Brisbane. Um, I think it cost me about a hundred bucks. And that was probably oh, 10 years ago. Still works, it's perfect. This 20 amp, I got that off of eBay for 40 bucks and I've had that for a few years now. No issues whatsoever. Batteries are doing great. Another quick uh, tip, another quick tip. Don't leave your batteries on charge. Some people love the idea of being able to hook it up to the charger, trickle feed. And, oh yeah, the battery will be right when I go to go back out. What it does is it actually shortens the life of your battery. Now this is only my experience, okay? I'm not a battery expert, but the formula I found, formula, that seems to work right is charge your batteries, crank them up when they're fully charged, take them off charge, let them sit for two weeks to a month. Certainly no more than a month, but at least two weeks to a month. Give them another boot in the guts, let them sit. I find if you leave them on trickle charge, they get lazy and... Um... Like this <laughs> um, I'd go out after leaving my batteries on charge and I'd literally pull the charger off, head straight out to the water and the batteries would be reading like 12.2, 12.3 volts, which is pretty low. So I started trying the, a different thing and um, charging them up and leaving them off charge for at least 24 hours before I go out fishing. And I was finding significantly higher voltage. So, you know, 12.7, 12.8, 12.9 volts. So um, there's certainly something in that. You want to make sure that your batteries are um, in tip-top condition, especially if they're running things like your bilge pump, your sounder, your emergency radio, stuff like that. So you don't want to muck around. Um, yeah, look, guys, I was just sitting at home bored, having a couple you beers. Thought I'd throw something out there. If any of these tips help anyone, awesome. If not, whatever. Laters.